this is this has been a cool experience and i wanted to come up with a cool way to show off this guitar that isn't just like here's how a 12 string sounds <laughs> dylan we gotta pack it all up all right what would happen to you if you only played a 12-string guitar for seven days? That's what I did a couple weeks ago, and I was amazed at all I learned. Now, this video does feature a guitar that is sponsored. Uh, this whole video is sponsored by Orangewood. They gave me this, uh, the Orangewood Echo 12 Live. It is such a cool guitar. But I didn't want to do just a demo. We'll do a demo here soon. But this video is all about what happens if you could only play a 12 string. What would you discover about yourself? And it's pretty cool and pretty amazing. So buckle in. Make sure you're subscribed. I'm Jeremy. I'm the Guitar Hunter. And thanks to Orangewood for sponsoring this video. <laughs> always feel like 12 strings like I wind up just playing things that I know to hear how they would sound in a 12 string and I do think it's cool that you just you find new things about it like you'll hear new things in those riffs like for me this time I hear a ton more that definition that like the C sharp minor in that when I put that A over it So this is the only guitar I've played for 24 hours now. It's the next morning. It's Wednesday morning. Uh, I played this last night for, so our family does like morning and evening prayer together. So we'll sing a song or a hymn together. Um, we did it this morning. And then I played this guitar uh, sitting around last night. It's very cool. Um, my first observations of what it's like to only play 12 string is that I find myself constantly tuning, which I'm really thankful for. Like, uh, I mean, this has a built-in tuner. And uh, so it is really helpful that there's a built-in tuner and you'll use it. Uh, but it's uh, it's interesting. The other thing that's really striking me is that it just sits in a different um, place uh, tonally than other guitars. Now, there are some 12 strings that will be more bassy, but most 12 strings, this is a pretty fair representation of a 12 string. Um, and it's uh, it's just, they're, they sit higher. It sounds more like a mandolin, which works out great, especially if you capo it up, capo it up a little bit. But uh, yeah, so far it's interesting. Day one, um, I haven't missed playing guitars. Uh, I haven't missed playing other guitars, but um, I find myself constantly tuning. But there's some really, really cool stuff, especially happens because this guitar is in dad get right now. So there's some amazing stuff that happens with, with the 12 string in dad get where you can just get so much sound. <laughs> it's not in tune but uh yeah day one it's pretty cool I i'm not missing playing other guitars there's so many clicks do you hear that it's not going there it is So what that means is that the nut on this is just cut two, it's two things. The nut is probably too tight for these strings, they're just not cut to the right grooves. And then the other thing is that there's probably, it's too dry, there's not enough lubrication. So tomorrow I'll probably run and get a set of strings, I'll take you guys to Hometown Music. And I'll grab a set of strings, I'll come back, I'll restring this, but I'll also lubricate that nut. So what happens is these strings keep like getting hung up. And then they're not quite up to pitch, and then I'm turning and turning and turning, all of a sudden click, it like tick, and finally goes, but then it's way sharp. So anyway, I've got it back 
in tune now. So, uh, I have friends coming over. We have small group at our house tonight. Off to small group. Hey, 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 hey. It's a Sunday. I don't normally film videos on Sunday. I also got a new wider lens. So, this is... That's really wide. You can see a lot of what's going on. Um, but today is Sunday. So I started Wednesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Today, five. And, uh... Let me sing you the song of my people. Um, every single time I pick up this guitar, I have to tune it. Tomorrow I need to go get a set of strings and restring this. But I played this on the live show the other day, and one of the things I noticed was listening back, and I'll put, I'll chop in a piece here. It's amazing. Um, this guitar, in an open tuning, with a big strummy thing, and if you're paying attention, it, I listened back to this track from the live show, from the opening of the live show, and it sounded like I had a drum track. It sounded like I had like at least a kick drum and a snare. And what I found was you can get like the woof of the low end, and then that that uh, the twelve string. Like if you can get a good chop, it sounds like a snare. And so I mean that's the like that's the appeal of a twelve string to me. I think most of the time is that it reminds me of uh, like was it Oceans by. Um, by John Butler. This is super, like, probably one of the first YouTube videos I remember ever seeing. I was in college, and uh, you get like da 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 da. You get like you can. He did this crazy giant thing where it just feels like you're in an ocean of music, and it's one guitar and it just keeps going over and over and over. And I think the only thing he did is like there's like a stomp box for him keeping his foot, keeping rhythm. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> So I did cheat on the challenge um, two times because there's a guitar over here that you still can't see. Um, it'll come out, I think that video will come out before this video comes out. Um, but anyway, so I had, we had to film the video on Friday. But that's the only time uh, I played, it was too cold for me to run out and get this guitar in the studio the other day and so I ended up... Um, that was one other change. But yeah, other than that, I've stuck with it and it's I'm still learning a ton. I feel like at, when I first started this out, I kept feeling like, oh man, playing you can't only have a 12 string. But now I'm feeling like, what if a 12 string is just a different instrument? What if it's not just like, oh, it's a version of a guitar. What if it's just a different thing? Now I would tweak a couple things. Like one thing that John Butler does is he takes off the octave. <laughs> off of that G string, because this is an eight, I think is the gauge on it, and it's just, it's too fickle. Um, it always sounds out of tune, um, and you just always are tweaking it between songs. So, but I think, yeah, what if a 12 string is just a different instrument entirely? And I think I'm there, especially in an open tuning. Man, this is just, it's a cool experience. Uh, like I said, I've only had to cheat twice, and it was like about an hour for one, then the other one I played a couple songs. But over other than that, and I did have to, I played my mandolin. But that felt not as cheating because that is an entirely different instrument. But I played my mandolin at church. But overall, what five, What do we figure out? Five days in, um, tons of tuning. And uh, sounds like a drum kit. That's probably the coolest one. It's like if I know that, if I know in a mix, I would keep that as an arsenal. So anyway, all right, well, see you guys tomorrow.
Welcome to day seven. Yeah, day seven, yeah, it's Wednesday, the next Wednesday. So I've played this guitar almost exclusively. Okay, I had to cheat. I had to play this guitar for a video. I haven't actually played that guitar. I had to pull it out for a picture um, for some B-roll and some stuff. And then I did play mandolin at church the other day. Um, but I've pretty much, other than, I've cheated like twice. Played in my Waterloo. Couldn't help it, it's in the house. It was hanging up. I put all the guitars in cases, um, but as the world of Guitar Hunter continues to leave, live and breathe and move, there's lots of stuff where it's like, oh, I need to get that guitar out. I need to get this guitar out. But um, yeah, man, so far, uh, I'm super happy with playing a 12 string. Um, I feel like only after, okay, so one of the phrases that I've, I've used a lot, and you'll hear it if you get the course, uh, if you get right guitars faster here soon, you'll start hearing this phrase a lot more. But the idea that clarity lives just on the other side of complexity. And so I think to see a thing clearly, you have to understand its complexity. And I appreciate, and I think our brains long for simple information that helps bring understanding. And so I think we're drawn to clarity. We want clear examples. We want the bottom line on things. And um, I think I'm getting there on a 12 string. I think a 12 string is a super fascinating guitar to hang with because most, I would bet, I would bet 95% of people that are coming into um, playing a 12 string are just going to think, Oh, I'll play the things I know on a guitar, and you will play this just like a regular six-string guitar. And I don't think it's until you spend enough time with it that you start leaning into its eccentricities. Nailed that word on the first time. Thought I'd have to do a jump cut. <laughs> um, but yeah, both its eccentricities and also the the nuances, the things that make a 12-string... Like, I'm a fingerstyle guitar player. Let me bring you down here. I'm going to show you. So, I'm a fig I'm sorry that I'm putting my pick in my mouth. I know. But, okay, so, I am a fingerstyle guitar player. And so when I play, uh, what's interesting is, on these, when you finger pick a 12 string, it seems to really thin out. So it's not until I've noticed that I've started doing a lot more like up picking with my fingers. Um, but especially if we're doing like this stuff. I found that if I go down with my thumb. So anyway, I'm starting to understand that to get the thickness out of it, to get that bass string first, you have to go this way. I, I think it's just best understood that this thing is like, it's its own thing. Like, yeah, it, it shares some similarities with guitars and you can definitely play it like a guitar, but to get the most juice out of it, you need to sit with it for a while. I mean, that's cool. I. I that's interesting. I really didn't see that part of it coming. Um, I love 12 strings, and I think I've made a big mistake in just treating them like, oh, it's like a guitar, but it just sounds a little chorusy. I think with this, it like can be a giant thing. It can sound like it has a drum kit behind it. It's way better suited, I think, if you're a singer-songwriter. Uh, in some ways, it could be really great. I, I'm super curious. There's still a couple things I'm going to do before I end this video. The last thing I'm going to do is I have to fix that ticking. I just haven't had a chance to go to the guitar shop yet. So here in a second, we'll jump in and we'll go to the guitar shop and I'm going to get a couple things. I'm going to get a new set of strings and I'm also going to get, um, going to get some nut sauce, some graphite. Uh, if not, I'll use a lead pencil. That's a normal trick. I don't think I, I think I used, I used an entire lead pencil. Who has ever done that in the history of lead pencils? I normally lose them long before that. Uh, but I used an entire lead pencil. It was actually from the University of Alabama, from an old friend that used to work there. So I led, I used this to lead worship the other day, and it felt like it was competing with the vocal range. And uh, it, yeah, I, I was, I found myself thinking about it a lot. Like, oh, I need to play it to be a little more bassy. But anyway, I, man, 
day seven. I, it's cool. I feel very different. So, I mean, I, again, I cannot thank Orangewood enough. This is, this has been a cool experience. And I wanted to come up with a cool way to show off this guitar that isn't just like, here's how a 12 string sounds. I just thought that it'd be way cooler to do this. So anyway, all right, um, let's head over to the guitar shop, get some strings, get some lubrication, come back here, restring it and see how it sounds in the final recap. Yes, the tricky thing with guitars is it doesn't take long before they start looking used. Mm -hmm. 1368. What I'm doing here, and you I explained this earlier, but <clears throat> what I'm doing here is that I'm running a lead pencil into the grooves. There's another way of doing this. This is the, the Dan Erlewine way of doing this, which I actually really like. I just don't have the two things I need, which is ivory soap. And if you use ivory soap, you can run it over the nut and totally fill it in. Then you can use a toothbrush to brush it away. What you'll do is you'll basically get all of it, it'll gloss up um, as, it, as the soap covers everything, and then it'll just leave enough soap to lubricate uh, the strings going through it. Graphite in this seems to work very similarly, not as good, but um, this would be my first try, use a pencil. Second trick would be doing the soap thing. If that still doesn't work then, I would get a file guide. Now I don't have the right files for the 12 string, they're just too many of the small ones. So anyway, this is uh, step one of step three. If I were to go this intense, I have a lot of optimism that this will fix my problem of getting rid of that ticking sound. All right, <clears throat> let's listen and see if there's any ticking here. Okay, first round through, I didn't hear any clicking that time, which is interesting. I heard some stuff kind of getting settled down here, but keep going. There it is, okay. The G was the biggest offender because it would get into, it would get like just just one tick below uh, in tune, and it would, uh, and I would turn it and turn it, turn it, and then it would make a ticking noise and it would scoot over. It'd be way too sharp. What a thing. Okay, man, seven days. Seven days of playing guitar. Coming out of this, man, I am I'm really amazed at what I've learned about playing guitar. And yeah, so I've recapped some of that, but I think my biggest takeaways is it's a different instrument. And yes, it's similar, like a guitar player could jump in, but if you would specialize in a 12 string, you would realize a couple things, especially how to get bass and low end out of it. Um, also, I did not hear any ticking after I restrung the guitar and I lubricated the nut. So I think the biggest thing is just making sure that this works as an entire physics system. That's the thing you'll hear all the time. I'll always talk about that. And, and that actually came from Rob Chapman when he was on a video. I'll, I'll tag it. Why not? I'll put a card up here. Uh, yeah, up there. And, um, but anyway, so this is an Orangewood 12 string. This is the Echo 12 Live. I've loved this guitar. It's been really fun to play all week. And I'm really excited to play it out live. I'm, I'm excited 
to keep this as a really great, really valid uh, acoustic guitar. There will be a link for these in the description below. These are amazingly affordable, great quality. This feels like a $1,500 or $2,000 12 string to me. It doesn't have quite the low end of an amazingly expensive guitar. Um, I recently played a Showalter 12 string that had so much bass and growl and low end. That is not a normal thing for 12 strings and you don't get that level of EQ until you spend a ton of money. So this guitar for everything you need to do has a built-in tuner, which you'll need because 12 strings have to be tuned all the time. But uh, I'll do a full review on this guitar now that I've spent such a long time with it. Um, but anyway, this is the Echo 12 Live from Orangewood. This video is sponsored by Orangewood. Thank you so much uh, to Orangewood for sponsoring this video. Now, I did, they didn't pay me. They gave me this guitar. This is the third Orangewood that I've gotten. They never paid me any dollars, but they have given me guitars. So I want you to know when I get deals, I'll let you know. But uh, again, thanks again. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribed. See you later. There's something about a 12 string that just feels right to gallop that All right, well, that's all I got. See you later.